We all love our dogs with all of our hearts, but there comes a time when we all have to say goodbye to them. This clip of Kiyoshi went viral on Instagram. Why? Perhaps it's because we love our dogs so much that the thought of losing them is unthinkable. Hundreds of thousands of people watch this clip as they could relate to what I was feeling. Our dog's lives are so short compared to ours. So short that we feel such pain and loss after such a short period of time with them. In this episode, I say goodbye to Kiyoshi, the most special and dearest dog I've ever had in my entire life. I discuss the traumatic decision us owners have in front of us when faced with the looming reality of euthanasia. It can leave us with feelings of guilt and remorse, but when our dog is faced with a painful disease that will cause them great suffering, then this is one of the questions that we have to address. But first, please come and rejoice in Kyoshi's life with me in this episode, as I celebrate the almost 13 years that I spent with this angel on earth and know that you are not alone when you lose your own best friend. I will share with you the love she brought out in people, including the outpouring from the animal artists the world over, who sent us an entire gallery of work in remembrance of this incredible animal watch icon. I also get my first tattoo in her memory. Death is sad, and we face it regularly with our short-lived dogs. But life is a beautiful circle, and puppies are healing and to be cherished. Kiyoshi, one of the original Finnish polar speed Tamascan descendants, arrived from Scotland after I lost my little Pomeranian Susie. Again, a puppy to heal the pain of loss I was currently going through. Kiyoshi came home, and I held my breath as I introduced her to my gigantic Alaskan Malamute, a male who did not tolerate bad behaviour or snappy small dogs. He could easily kill her. But what was to follow was heartwarming to the core. Kiyoshi had gumption, even at eight weeks of age. But not just that. She had great canine body language. She was open, friendly, playful and respectful a personality which would lead to her being one of the kindest, most balanced dogs I've ever had the pleasure to meet. Kiyoshi grew, and a natural mothering instinct was inside her. So despite her almost dying at three years of age from inflammatory bowel disease and dropping to a horrific 13 kilograms from 26, she embraced Rescue Zora when I brought her over from Romania just like she was her own child. After 12 months of a skeletal Kiyoshi, raw food magically transformed her life and her Crohn's disease equivalent was put permanently into remission. Kiyoshi grew healthy and we shared so many wonderful years together. She was a true matriarch of all the dogs in my pack. They all respected her and did what she asked. So after 12 years of bliss and me bragging on social media about how wonderful and healthy Kiyoshi was, the inevitable happened. She started to drink bucket loads of water for no reason whatsoever. Coincidentally, her sibling Tuscan did also, who lived in Australia. Both of us, Alison and I, were faced with horrific news. Both the siblings had cancer. Both Kiyoshi and Tuscan spent many months having chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And each time we went, Zora would cry for Kiyoshi in the car. And Kiyoshi would take one look at me as if to say, I'm only doing this for you, Mum, before she reluctantly walked through the doors into the Cambridge Vet School. Home life started to become pretty tough. 
Due to her bladder cancer, Kiyoshi would wet herself constantly all over the floor, the dog baskets, and even on the sofas. Sometimes she had terrible diarrhea from the treatment, and sometimes constipation that made her squeak as she passed a stool. Sometimes even more shocking, I would find the puppy pad soaked with blood, a reoccurring urinary infection, side effects of the chemotherapy. Then one day the dreaded visit came, the one where the vet says, can we talk somewhere quiet? Everyone knows what is going to be said, yet we still sit and listen. Of course, it was what I expected. The chemotherapy wasn't working, and her tumour had grown so large that it might be only weeks that I had left with her. I felt like my world had imploded. I took her home, kissed and cuddled her, like she was the most precious thing on earth. I begged the universe to save her, even offered my health up as collateral. But the universe answered in a way that suggested that it was Kyoshi's time to come home. She got weaker and weaker, but there was a beautiful outpouring of sympathy on the internet as animal artists the world over started to send in paintings, drawings and impressions of Kyoshi. Kyoshi and I would unwrap them together. Obviously, this then brought me to the thought in my head that we all dread. That decision. That moment that no dog owner ever wants to be in. The moment we question what the best thing is to do for our loved one. As she declined, part of me begged the universe to just take her as she slept in the night, peacefully in her sleep. Why couldn't she just pass with pain medication easing her aches and pains. Humans do it all the time. I guess the hard thing is, we can't explain to them what is wrong with them and why their body is hurting so much. I tried this method once with my Kizan, who was sick with cancer, and the morphine pain medication made her hallucinate and howl. She died howling throughout the night, and I swore I would never repeat this decision. The vets begged me to make the call on Kyoshi, saying tough huskies hide pain really well. But I knew that a dog will let you know when it's time, so I hung on. But then the day came when she told me. Eventually life made the decision for me. And one day Kyoshi simply stopped walking. Her rear legs went limp, <laughs> And she lay down, her breathing heavy and laboured. I knew the end was near and wanted to sit stroking her as it happened. But then she did what we all dread, started to howl and cry. She howled in anguish, perhaps delirium like humans as their bodies are giving up. I had to carry her to my car and drive her to the vets due to COVID restrictions not allowing home visits and had to sit on the floor with my vets in COVID masks. But I had no choice. My options were gone. I couldn't let her die in agony. I owed her this, at least, to pass easily and simply drift off to sleep. Kyoshi passed at one in the afternoon. I felt her last heartbeat and felt her last breath as I held her. When I returned to my car with her body laid in the trunk, reality sank in and I sat and simply screamed. I had lost the dog of my life. The dog I would never, ever have again. The one that even made me question my morals on cloning. The one that was irreplaceable, as she was too perfect to ever come into my life again. I drove that precious baby 20 miles to a crematorium that I'd used before. One that I knew did a beautiful job. She was laid out in a hut on white sheets. I brought flowers and surrounded her in them. I laid the artwork around her and played music. I wrote her a letter to say, thank you for being in my life. And Zora, who considered herself to be her daughter, 
lay at her feet after smelling her paw for one last time. She was carried with dignity and cremated in my presence. That video of her laying on the table went viral on Instagram and I asked myself why? It's because none of us can stand the thought of losing our dog and the sympathetic outpouring was off the charts as the video closed in on one million shares. All of us dread that day that will come at some point where not only will we lose our loved one, but we may even have to assist with their passing. Kiyoshi came home to me in the tallest casket I could get, the colour matching her vivid red-brown fur. I had a charm made from her ashes and a paw print taken off her foot. The pain was unbearable. Within one month of her passing, I got the awful news. Tuscan, her brother too, had passed. And unbelievably, another half-brother too elsewhere in the world all fairly young for a husky mix. Twelve seemed way too young, and Tuscan was only eleven. The other brother was about six, which was awful. As I suffered so much pain from Kyoshi's passing, and the art had given me comfort, I decided to make a gallery in her honour, with all the artwork mounted together in one studio in the house. Now there was one last thing that I needed to do for Tuscan and his mum Alison in Australia. And this was it. Okay, I think you can look now. You can look? Yeah. <gasps> no, what's this? Well, I would just like to say a big thank you on behalf of myself personally and Animal Watch to all of the amazing artists who have sent wonderful, wonderful uh, paintings, drawings, um, computer drawings of Kiyoshi, all showing her in a different way, different emotions, old, young, throughout her life. I've been really, really touched by the response. And um, as you can see, we have our own Kiyoshi gallery, but I have a very, very special surprise today for somebody who is watching and um, she's not going to realize this but I won't um, I won't waste any more time it's to do with this little picture that I've got here today so this is for you Alison <laughs> Alison, as you know, we both shared this journey together with both our dogs, Kyoshi and her brother Tuscan. Two beautiful Tamascans born at Alba in Scotland. And um, I've got this most amazing piece of art, artwork here that um, one of the artists has very, very kindly um, donated 
for this exhibition alongside, um, well, two copies actually, one to come to you in Australia to hang on your wall to remember Tuscan and um, one here to hang on my wall to remember Kiyoshi. Um, it's been a very, very difficult journey for us both to, learn, to lose both dogs within a month of each other. I mean, it's unbelievable to have very similar cancers and to die at a very similar age. Um, just want to say thank you so much for sharing the ups and the downs of every part of the journey. And I will never forget these two. And I really hope you don't too. And so this is for you, Alison. And here's to all the future dogs that will bless our lives. And um, I know that they will have a wonderful mother. And um, here's just a little bit of a, um, a compilation of my favorite little bits I've put together of, of, of Tuscan and Kyoshi. Big kiss. Oh, that is so, so sweet. That's unbelievable. I also swore blind that I would never have a tattoo. But as Kiyoshi was my dog of my life, I wanted to join her with me. And it felt the right thing to do. So I went to No Regrets in London to have a really simple and beautiful tattoo created in her honour that I could look at every day. We all dread the day we lose our babies, but remember that you are not alone. And every time we lose a precious being like Kiyoshi, we are opening our heart for a new baby to come and heal it. Cal L arrived unbelievably on what would have been Kiyoshi's 13th birthday on the 5th of June, 2021, three months after her passing. His little nose and his beautiful spirit opening my heart up again. He would never take her place, but he would help to heal the hurt and he would soon be crafting his own set of memories with me, unique memories and love set aside for him and him alone. Here's to all our dogs, past, present and future. We celebrate these pure beings and the love they give us unconditionally. They heal us, they make us laugh, and in return, we absolutely must give them protection, love and safety. We are their pack leaders, and it's our responsibility to not only bring them joyously into our lives, but to help them painlessly leave them too. I'd like to say I hope you enjoyed this episode of Animal Watch. Maybe you did, in a bittersweet way. Maybe you received some comfort from it, perhaps shed a tear. But hopefully you will always know to do the right thing by your loved one when the time comes. Much love and bye for now. <laughs>